Vyas Media Network. So today we had another episode and I was joined with Rao Mokhtan. I met a Vyas supporter, so we had a really authentic conversation. Uh, we talked about it, uh, how we got started with Muay Thai and how he trains his athletes and I guess the kind of dedication and sacrifice all of them have given to this sport, which was really beautiful and inspiring. And then at the end, we also dropped a few teasers about a new gym and a new project that he's been working on. So listen to the end to find out. Thank you. Why not start now? Oh, and you're doing phenomenal, man. Yeah. You're doing great. Like. I bet you in five years I'll look back at this podcast and I'll be like, what was I talking about? Like, I think it's cringe. It's like, but that's part of it. You know, but like, that's part of life, bro. Yeah. Like, no matter how old, like, when I look back at what I did five years ago, I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Were you still fighting five years ago? No, no, no. Mm-hmm. I start, like, I stopped fighting about eight years ago. You're how old now, though? We don't talk about that. Oh, we don't talk about the age. We don't talk about the age. That's a no, no, so it's like this guy, I've got this thing going on with like uh, with my students, mainly with Prapti Parika, yeah. where they don't know how old I am. Oh, so they don't know how old no. you are? So oh, really? Like, yeah, yeah. You Google got it bit on dinner? Bit on dinner. So. Oh, you're like fully... So they don't yeah, know how yeah. old you are? No. And they keep asking, right? So I was like, look, I won't tell you, but the day I turn 40 is like when you'll know my age. Oh, so, fair enough. Yeah. You know, it ain't cost a car. Like, it's like if someone, like, they Instagram mountain and they're like, happy 30th first birthday party. Do you just no. not repost that? Or okay? No, people don't really know, man. Oh, people just don't know. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's just not, guessing, yeah. yeah. Oh, fair enough. I get random figures also. Yeah. I'm not sure what that means, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming, Dai. Thanks, It means a lot, much. like. Uh, I just know that you're very busy, you're doing a lot of things, running a gym, mm. um, training like athletes of the next generation and your time means a lot. So thank you so much. Thanks bro. Thanks for having me. You're doing great too and like I've seen the guys that have come on the show and yeah. I'm kind of intimidated. I know, that's okay. <laughs> Even I feel intimidated. <laughs> what is my life? <laughs> no, you're doing great bro. Um, dude, so what's up? Like Jim Khan of Bates to do I'm not like how did all of that get started? Um so uh Jim Khan I think is basically my uh, I think my fifth gym, mm-hmm. if I'm being honest. So I was uh in between India Thailand, India Thailand when I was doing my college and I was actively fighting as well. So Titi Kirane is like so I always See, fighting is a short career, ni. You can only fight from like for so long. You know what I mean? After your mid thirties, it's kind of done. And uh, what about life after fighting? But like, there's no way I could go to like a regular job. So, uh, and then my coach, who owned the gym, because I got really good at it really fast. So he started asking me to assist him with the classes, and then I became an assistant coach, and then I became a coach a few years later. And then he asked me if I wanted to be part shareholder of the gym, if I wanted to open another gym with him. And then I was just like, let's go just for it. For yeah. the ride. Let's yeah, go yeah. for the ride. Oh, you don't know let's oh. just go. And then went along with it. And then I realized like, hey, man, I saw a lot of gyms. I traveled a lot uh, around Thailand, a lot of places. And then yeah, I was like, man, I can actually build a really nice gym in Zin with all the knowledge that I have. So... Then we decided to build uh, Jim Khanna. So, you know Karmadai? Uh, no. So Karmadai is my partner. Yep. Uh, I was like stuck with the uh, with the work and stuff. And he's like, Bye, let's do it. Because even he had this vision yeah, of having a gym like is this. Is he in the fitness industry as well? Or he's no. just a businessman? Yeah, he's in business. But he's like more of a... He's, he's someone with a vision. Yeah? So he likes doing things that are different, that are big. You know what I mean? And it's refreshing to see, like, someone who's not from the sport but has that vision for the sport. So he was like, Bye, let's do it. Mm. All the gyms were pretty much like, you're right, I put in, you're in a high-rise building or inside a house. You know, and you're, you're kind of renting it. It's not like you built from the floor up yeah. just to be a gym. Kind yeah, of. exactly. So like, now let's build it this way. And I was like, Dai, I know exactly what we need to build. <laughs> we do, we'd already started half the work. And then we, we, we did it. 
and like in my head it was always uh, like bani ko jaise bana hai but at the same time we built the gym at, in 2017 and uh, i had the thing in my head somewhere around 2014 15 ke mero college ko capstone class ma my capstone the submission was what gym khana is right now ke so it was back then i already knew what i wanted it to be like but it was like a prototype just to, okay ali ko gym khana tha and like manifest that was you know? yeah Does it, did that project that you did, did it turn out exactly the way you thought it did it turn out better or are there a few things that you think could have been improved oh there's always room for improvement man no matter what there's always room for improvement but uh for what it was at that time when like it was a big risk and by costly got it and because usually it's like you rent it right and it, yeah. you're renting a space yeah. and if it doesn't work out you just you just yeah. leave na yeah. your tenant in a building yeah. where gym khana was is your building yeah. you know you can't just leave you yeah true and tu banda ni is to ke so tu volume ma khasi people would not really build gyms ke okay? it wouldn't uh I'm not saying every single gym at that point but a lot of gyms at that point were like um five six people who have like a little extra money and like working out would be like hey let's just put in money and build our own gym and we can even make a little bit of money from there but this is them and tell you that here isn't like it wasn't really the the fitness industry like this to respect in thing okay like oh here a gym okay when is thing okay is seen as a side hustle basically it's more like we were rich guys and we want a private gym let's open a pri- like yeah. our own gym and let's yeah. open it to the public and yeah. see where it goes yeah. so it wasn't like planned from no, no. college no, no. Yeah. <laughs> but sab pe gym hai na most of them and tell you that here i think like i'm sorry i think like a lot of people the unknown is always scary ni but for me it wasn't unknown like i'd grown up in that culture i'd been in it at that point for like almost 10 years or more so for me it was like yo i know what it's going to be like i know how it's going to run and i know it's going to run i know it's going to do well the uh but it's you went to you the first time you went to the gym was with your mom right uh, to to the gym to a gym yeah, yeah. yeah was with your yeah, mom yeah. and again yeah, like were you just like the bata but hey yeah in bossa or she took you to work out she took me to work out bro oh damn <laughs> she used to work out too right yeah. and then she's going every day and then she's like how old are you 15 15 okay yeah. yeah so i just like you got to go it's your growing age and <laughs> you you got to like i learn fit in person i used to play basketball so when i was younger i used to play a lot of sports a lot of sports like i play any sport but i used to play mostly as play basketball only once i got done with like the 10th grade i kind of stopped playing anything mm-hmm. and my mom's like no you can be lazy <laughs> you go to the gym man so i don't know why but it happens a lot with It happened with me as well and I can see it happened to a few people in my school as well and it's like 10th grade but yeah I don't know if it's because studies get serious or the school kind of phases that part of your life out because yeah. they want you to focus on studies yeah, yeah. but they be study be study their passion like all day dance again yeah. and I'm like hey like I used to love football and I was never the best like when I scored a goal I would freak out right but the pass I did face my boss it name but it doesn't mean I didn't love it any less than yeah, yeah. I asked God like I can't even time find time to like watch football yeah, you know like yeah. I don't I don't have that passion well, I think anymore. like life happens one yeah. and two is like I'm from a student athlete program and it's a strong sign on the mm. right so abroad you want to do say you're a kid who grew up in wrestling right you want to do well you want to get into like the high school programs and based on that you want to do a really good and then you want to maybe win like the the regionals or whatever then based on that you get a scholarship in college and at the college uh, college scholarship like you can actually build your life in the so you have to assign on the yeah culture in the net so i think it's more like focus on that hardcore study the only way to get a scholarship yeah. is um to be good like mm. get good grades study mm. well but i think i only know one person who has actually gone to college on a on a on a like a athlete scholarship mm-hmm. from Nepal. Like, yeah. Is it to the yeah, yeah. culture right now? Yeah. I even I don't, even I don't know a lot of them. And yeah, guy when you when you have like I don't know. 
I just feel like uh, there's a lot to be done for for athletes here. Okay? There's a lot of work to be done for us. There, a lot of people say that, and I'm like, she's on diapani, like he's big in this fitness now, and he wants to mm. promote literally anything he can, from mm-hmm. futsal to everything, right? Mm. How, um, and they all say like there's a lot that needs to be done, but from you, who's like. From a young age, like you've mm-hmm. been an athlete, you know, from basketball to mm-hmm. Muay Thai to opening your own gyms to creating your own athletes to compete on a world level, what do you think needs to change? By <laughs> answer, bro. Like I can only speak for combat sports right now, right? Because the last time I played basketball was like I don't think you're even born, bro. <laughs> 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 I'll only speak for combat sports and um, I'm Ruma. Nepali, I mean, we're like a warrior nation, you know, <laughs> in the battlefield, in a war. <laughs> it's very different from combat sports. Yeah? It, combat sports is it's a sport. And do we really, can we really sit here and say that we have a huge combat sport culture in Nepal? Mm-hmm. How long have people been watching MMA and Muay Thai for in Nepal? It's been very recent. Uh, yeah, no? It's been coming yeah. up very recently. Exactly. And the big fight show that the first big fight show fight event that ever happened in Nepal was GFN. Yeah. And in my opinion, like we made so many mistakes there, <laughs> so many mistakes. So till you go, it's not like we have this huge culture, and then for years the tradition set by it. There's like a blueprint to follow, and everybody can do it this way, this way. Bande is like a, vitra bada bande is like a grassroots level bada. You for you to build that like. It takes years and years and years of work. Even countries that have a huge culture, like um, Thailand, London, U.S., London, Brazil, uh, Russia, right? Even there, they mess up, man. Like people mm-hmm. mess up. It's it's normal. It's part of life. Yeah, I think I'm written. Kiwi is tendency. I mean, yes, of course it's not perfect. Of course it needs work. Of course there's a lot of work to be done, right? But we always focus on like the negative. Okay? Mm-hmm. I'm. The victim mentality, in a way, I feel like we kind of have that sometimes. Okay? It's not just us, man. I've I've seen this sport on so many levels, ne? from like the amateur, absolute crazy amateurs where like people are getting beers in the corner and <laughs> drinking. Yeah. Who was that? Okay? Like they would go back. They yeah. fight in the corner. Got it. They want beer. Yeah. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. Like, well, like a drunken fight. I, I, you can't be sober. Can you? <laughs> like, if you're drinking in between runs, I'm pretty sure you've been drinking before the fight too. <laughs> so I've seen like that. Ryan Garcia. So this is the like to IFMA, which is the pinnacle of Muay Thai, yeah. right? IFMA has like over a hundred countries, more than a thousand participants. <laughs> like even like, even there they make mistakes, man. Everywhere they make mistakes. You know, we just tend to sit here and be like, "Yo, by the by the Make the change is what I say. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, make the change from the inside or shut up about it. Like, talking is only for what your own popularity sake that you're talking, yeah. so that people listen to you when you're talking, right? But don't talk, man. Go and do it. Be the change. I think that's the best way to prove yourself. I think, I think yeah. a lot of the times, like, I'm not perfect as well, right? And I'm a kid, so I piss yeah. my parents off, and I do something. And then and then I go out and I say sorry and they they won't take it. They say, okay, sorry, but they know this you change, you start studying or you you clean up the dog poop, you know, like you actually do it like this sorry but they exactly. It's not gonna make hey sorry boy yeah all the dishes are clean now. It does absolutely nothing, man. Like sorry means nothing. Yeah. Words basically mean nothing, to be honest, man. Like, we, we, every time, every single podcast, man, we've kind of touched on this, uh, that I've been on, not that I go to a lot of podcasts, but we've touched on this, okay? I'm Ruby Trubert, and how can we change kitchen? I'm like, I've, and people always say, the government needs to do more, this needs to do more. Everybody needs to do more, bro. Yeah. Everybody needs to do more. There are, there are athletes abroad, there are fighters abroad, who work three jobs a day, go to school, and still train and fight. Yeah. Right? There are people who do. When I was fighting, I had more than two jobs, man, and I had school. So, like, I had college. So I would, um, I would go to teach and train at my 
own gym where my coach was. That's job number one. Yeah, that's job number one, right? Oh, yeah. And then I used to work at Fitness First. So another gym. Yeah. <laughs> so I used to take like uh, kickboxing classes at Fitness oh, yeah. First because I was broke then, you know. And that was my other job. So right after my class was over, I, my training was over, I'd head out and I'd do this job. And then I had another job where like I had all my fighters. To theater. I'm, like for me, having a lot of fighters around me and, you know, a team around me is like... Uh, this is like you fighting. and This is not yeah, Gymkhana. This is no, like no, no, you is, fighting. Yeah. Where was this? India? This is yeah, Delhi Mall. Okay. Right? So I'm a Delhi Mall. Like, I've been around fight teams for like 15, 16 years of my life. You know what I mean? Like for me, this culture is so... I grew up in it in a way. And it, we'd always have fighters around us. We're all broke, man. <laughs> so, Amatan, I could speak a bit of English and, you know, so I could like communicate with people a little bit better. So I would kind of take the lead. And then I got this deal from this guy in Delhi who's like, yo, I'm opening up like a really nice Thai restaurant. And then I'm going to put a ring in the middle of the restaurant. <laughs> like, insane. Yeah. And That's like unheard of. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I want to have demo, I, I want to have Muay Thai demonstrations and like fake fights, like WWE style. Yeah, yeah. But Muay Thai. The beer in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and he's like, I want to do this three nights a week. Can you set it up? I was like, you got it. <laughs> yeah, one idea. <laughs> then, so this is when you're still an athlete, right? Huh? Uh, this is yeah, when you're, yeah, so yeah. you're like athlete, you're training, you're yeah, promoting. <laughs> yeah, 100%, man. So in the morning, I'd have school. <laughs> in the afternoon, straight after school, I'd go to the gym. After gym, I'd go to fitness first, and three days a week, I'd go to, like, this place, uh, this restaurant, and then all my boys, we'd all go in there in the ring, and then they'd perform. It's almost like, a spar- like sparring for them, but then yeah, it's like yeah. a performance. But choreographed sparring, yeah. Like, hey, choreographed sparring <laughs> is <laughs> like... Lovely style. Yeah. Hey, okay, so it's more like the yeah. rigged fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a show, basically. Yeah. It's like the restaurant market entertainment. Do you think that kind of stuff actually helps grow the culture of Muay Thai or not really? I mean, people who never knew what it was kind of heard about it for the first yeah. time. So, uh, I think it helped. I know in Yamapan, there's a huge uh, martial arts is really growing in India, ni? especially with Anshul getting into the UFC and like Puja won uh, Asti Iza, and she won her debut. So, UFC is also really focusing on the Indian market. Ni? Yeah. But ten ten years ago, if you went to anywhere in India and said like MMA. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, literally. So Muay Thai is in I've had I've told I've said this before, man. I've had fights where Rinko Sata hockey stick. There's like locals standing with hockey sticks like this, right? Oh locals like yeah, standing in with square. it. Like, thinking, like <laughs> No no holding it like this. Like holding hands. Yeah, <laughs> like, so that's the ring. That's the ring, okay. I've, I've seen that. I've seen like fights where uh guys are going through the judges' table, yeah. <laughs> like an angle. <laughs> Fight go- there's no ring right there's no ring to it. it's like the guy just stay like <laughs> so, live um, action yeah from there to like where India is now in terms of MMA with like promotions like Matrix Fight Night and Bidang and stuff like that and us the WMF India won a world medal a, a, world, a world title as well so they're doing awesome man so I guess that those fake fights did help yeah. to a certain they degree did help, yeah <laughs> I didn't feel like India's right there. No, I feel mm-hmm. like it's only a matter of time before we get recognized like that as mm-hmm. well, right? With yeah. people that are property and all coming up at such a young age, right? Mm-hmm. And the only you the what was it called again? The um the Olympics version the Mithago W Ifma, Ifma, Ifma yeah. yeah. And she went there as well yeah. and now like we're slowly getting there as well and I think it's only a matter of time. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and we shouldn't like sit here focusing on who didn't do what for us and yeah. how we don't have this and how we don't have that. I know, like it sounds wrong when I say it sometimes, but then again, they when they I'm not doing Athletes all over the world they got it. Yes, I'm like other got it, but that means we just got to work harder. that much harder. Yeah. And we are. You can yeah. see it, like for the people that actually want it, they yeah. they do it. Yeah, right. Hundred percent. How how can you tell if someone really wants it? Because to us, right now, for me, if I were to see if someone really wants it, I'm like, oh. They come to training, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my bar, okay? One, like, my name is 16, 17 years I've been doing this, man. So... Uh, it's I, my age. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So since before you guys were born, almost. So I can almost sniff it out, like, <laughs> to a certain degree. Uh, two is, like, time locks. So you have to watch a person, yeah? You know what I mean? Coaching isn't just about holding pads. That's, like, 
you're a fat guy if you're showing fat. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Like, yeah. fat, it's very important to have yeah. someone who knows how to hold fats. But coaching is about so much more than that. Okay? You've got to sometimes like really give your time, your energy, your effort to this individual and say, and who you don't really know that well. And the buzze, buzze, now that when the layers slowly come off from an athlete, like the first way to find out is like put them in sparring. Just yeah, straight you, up, like yes. No, not straight up, like like so, after a certain time. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yes. So we let them spar. So to go sparring, but then we we just take them through the motions. Like it's very, very just touch, touch, touch oriented. Where, uh, they just nobody's used to having punches and kicks coming to you towards yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So they look at that. We just get you get them used to it, and then when we actually throw it some days then after a certain point in time, then you you always see them break or you see them like rise. Okay. Mm. And then after that, we turn it into, that's why we have the GFN prospects, which yeah. is the amateurs. So we get them like, that's the safest environment for anybody who wants to try fighting. We've had guys who are uh, 38, 39 years old fight. We've had kids who are like 11, 10 years old fight. Damn, 11, 10. Yeah, yeah bro. We've wow. had like, eh, Prapti fought. G- Prapti's first fight was GFN prospects. She was 13 years old yeah. and she trained with me for one month. Yeah. And like in sparring, she was doing really well. Both her and her sister Pike were doing really well. So we were like, I was like, all right, at this point, the only thing left to do, if you know the culture, is like put them in the ring. So got them like a safe fight, safe in the sense like, you know, go headgear, they can get a protection or yeah. something. Make sure that they don't get hurt. Nobody gets hurt because these are kids fighting again. Yeah. And two supply measures later, Get them in a fight because in a fight the timing is different, right? Everything's different. The you can't be like one, two, yeah. double, right? It's yeah. like you gotta think and yeah. So then we do that, and you fight. For me, here's the important thing: yeah, when I choose, when I see if somebody actually wants it or not. After the fight, the fight isn't important for me. The fight's not important. You win or lose, it's not important, right? One, do you go out there to fight? And two is, after the fight's over, how do you handle yourself? Whether you win or you lose, I don't care. But how do you handle yourself? How should athletes be handling themselves? Like a champion at all times, if that's what you want to be. At all times. You can't get lost in that result right now. Like, no matter if you win or lose, they're like, you can't let it take you away. A fight typically lasts for, what, three, three three-minute rounds, but three, five-minute rounds. A fight, even in the UFC, title fight lasts for 25 minutes, right? Whatever happens in those twenty five minutes, suck you in the, it's over, yeah. right? You can't you, do it. right. It's yeah. it's over. Whether you won, you lost, it doesn't matter. It's over. You need to be focused on the next one, and you need to represent yourself well until the next one turns up. This is my perspective on fighting, and this is why I have respect for so many people who take fighting as a career, right? Because football, basketball, yes, they train hard as if they work really hard, but. Their next match is always guaranteed, right? Mm. And it's like a season, and right? yeah. you're guaranteed to play and yeah. all that, right? Whereas fighting, my you gotta look for the fights. Your yeah. your team's gotta look for the fights, yeah. and you're training so hard not for a season of fighting, mm. but just that fifty minutes in the cage yeah, or yeah. in the ring, right? And yeah. I think that's why that dedication is so admirable because mm. they're not doing it as oh, if we train, we get to fight the whole year. It's yeah. We're training just for that fifteen yeah. minutes in yeah. the ring, which, which almost makes it that much more intense yeah, because yeah. they want it that much more. Oh. It's not like hey, yeah, I didn't even care, and then the next oh. fight, so they oh. it's like because you can die and it's yeah, it's course. risky, you know. Like and even if you don't die, you could like yeah. get injured to a point where you can never fight again. Exactly, which is ultimately could be worse, right? Yeah. For the mental health of and course, everything, yes. right? And as a coach. Some of that blame will come to you, right? Mm. Especially you younger athletes, right? Mm. I mean, people like Prapti and Parikh are coming up. Like, how do you balance that between, yes, you have to fight, but also, yes, you have to, like, like you have to be safe, right? No, you, yeah, can't just, yeah. you can't just send them out. Yeah. And that. Well, that's actually a really good question, bro. And that's one of the things that I think we might be doing wrong in Nepal, okay? And I've made that mistake too. One is we upsell our athletes like crazy. Upsell? <laughs> As in like, over, I've got this again. I'm like, oh, for yeah. no reason. You're getting me? Um, I always keep it real with 
uh, with Prati, with Parika, and with Karan, like I always keep it real. I never mess around. I tell them like, yes, you're ready for this level, but you're not really there for that level yet. Mm-hmm. We're slowly getting there. We're working towards it. It takes time. It's not gonna happen overnight, but we're getting there. But like, I'm just so when you get to the oh my God, that's like the next goal. You know what I mean? And I can understand to a certain degree why also because we don't really have heroes to celebrate as such and in combat sports in Nepal or in sports in general other than a handful. So like we really want someone to win. We want our Nepali guy to win or Nepali girl, someone training from here to win. But it's very important for as a coach to not get carried away in that. Okay? Hmm. You have to understand that yes, with that you get a lot of like when Prapti wins or when Parika wins, I win too. Right? Yeah. And Everybody Nepal like, wins. Yeah. Like, no one's going to hate on you. Be like, in the like, exactly. yeah. no hour, like everybody wants you oh. to win. And then that gives you like this weird kind of high. Yes, yeah. man, the adrenaline rush. And some, the... Everybody gets that. Oh. And yeah. then the thing is, but you can't get addicted to that. Yeah. Because then, as a coach especially, because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making decisions where I'll be like, okay, couldn't fight God if it's in our career. Not couldn't fight God if it's in our career build on because the career what's the what's the difference like when you like see bro if i threw parika in tomorrow right for like one fc let's say or yeah. uh rws or channel 70 fights these are like the big names in in yeah. thailand okay? or like a big big lumpini stadium fight it would do a lot of good for me like i can say oh i got my i got my fight at yeah you know if i take and it would do a lot of good for her also like oh She's in one of uh, one of see or she's in RWS or she's in like a Lumpini. A major fighting promotion. And, and there's no guy. Yeah. <sighs> but there you've got to deal with real, real fighters. That's true. Right? Girls who've been fighting since they were like five, six, seven years old have hundreds of fights. Mm. I have to be honest with them. Will we get there? One hundred percent, we'll get there. But we're not there yet. So why would I throw her in there? If, that could almost be harmful to her exactly. career. If she gets injured really badly, yep. like, if she can no longer fight, like, yes, uh, you can take it off. I fought in yeah. one FC, I fought in Lumpini Stadium, yeah. but for what? You know, yeah. like, I can never fight again. Yeah. Will, like, and that's, yeah. it's not really a career. That's more of like a bucket list. To exactly, stuff, yeah. So then it's I not get the goal. My, it's not the goal. And not at all, bro. The goal is for her to get to the highest, prom- biggest promotions in the world, to to go on a run there, dominate everybody, Become champion, right? To be an actual contender and to yeah. be had to be recognized as exactly. like a like a danger. Color. Yeah, not a flash in the pan. Yeah. So that's that's the goal, and that's why for coaches it's very important to not get carried away in that hike. Okay? And I feel like uh, because I've been in this for so long, I've made those mistakes. You know, I've it's not like I've never made. I've made those mistakes. Uh, the, I, I've learned from those mistakes, and I will not repeat those mistakes. I made that mistake with Parika even. I threw Parika into her first pro fight. It wasn't a pro fight. It was like a semi-pro fight. After four and a half months of training me time. Because she got so good in training. Like, she was beating everybody at the gym. And she was like, we got her an amateur fight at the GFN man. And then she just went through the girl in like, throughout the fight, she just went through her. And then I was like, you know what? Okay, just go fight semi-pro. You got this one. And I threw her in, but like, it was too early. You know what I mean? If, if, the parika right now would kill the parika back then in less than a minute. And that was way too early for me to put her in there. Okay? Yeah. And tell you that was confidence. What did you say? Confidence is key and also the, the mental aspect when going into a fight. And yeah. like you said, as a coach, it's not about hitting pads and yeah. Do yeah. your burpees, right? It's, yeah. You probably take care of the diet as well to some degree. Yeah. Yeah. The emotional, the, the mental, all of that, right? Yeah. How do you mentally prepare fighters to go into the ring? Um, if you're going to be a fighter, number one, you got to want it, right? If you need someone else to come and tell you, hey, man, you need to get <laughs> excited, like get get out with it, with it that guy's probably going to lose. Uh, you really need to want it, number one. For whatever reason, maybe it's to support your family, maybe it's because you have this burning desire, but you have to want it, number one. And number two is, as a coach, you have to keep them disciplined. Discipline is everything. 
everything. When I say discipline, I don't mean go get me water. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people misunderstand discipline for like almost a form of just bullying people around. Yeah. Right? Obedience. Yeah. It's not that. No, not at all. Discipline is like how you live your life, how you present yourself, how you, what version of the world, uh, what version of yourself do you want the world to see and to remember you by, you know, and uh, for my athletes, discipline is number one. If my athletes ever step out of line, ever, like. What does step out of line mean? Like they, they start partying, they start like, they don't go into training, like. But what does you don't come to training, that's a big problem for me. Okay. Like, we have over 100 kids in Muay Thai alone, right? You know. Yeah. People think you don't know that, but you know. Yeah. Everybody thinks I don't know, but I know. Then you put like, I just walk down the hall once, man. I, I, it's a quick scan. So as soon as you enter Jim Khan, you've been there. You, you, yeah, yeah. As soon as you enter, it's like, Dang, you can see, you see everything. Yeah, so it's a quick scan, and I'm like, one day I know Chiksa, two days I know Chiksa. By the third day, I I ask I ask my team like, yo, <laughs> where's that guy? Where's that <laughs> girl? Okay. Yeah. And call up and answer. Call his answer. Like if someone's getting ready for a fight and they don't turn up in training, like you call team, and Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you messing around? Yeah. <laughs> That's number one. Number two is like, you're you're a combat sport athlete that means you're not a goon you're not a thug you're not a bully right if you go around doing stuff like that outside the gym wherever i don't care because you got you got the skills for it inside the gym yeah and if i find out that you've been like going out and basically being a bully it's a big no no like there's no coming in there ever again cuz you don't want to teach that person cuz you're almost yeah. giving weapons to the yeah. to like a killer you know and kids like, mind yeah. you, kids, we've got, I, I'm telling you, the average age for our Muay Thai classes with over 100 kids is like, I think, 17. And that's taking in consideration the odd 25, 30-year-old that's yeah, yeah. still there in class, right? But most of them are 15, 16, 17, 18. So. And I think there's a key difference when it comes to this transition between bullying and, like, not bullying outside the gym. It's like confidence and arrogance. Because I do think... Fighting gives you that sort of confidence. I think going to the gym in general will give you that, right? Mm. But I think as soon as you get arrogant, I think that's where yeah. the problem sets in, right? Can you you can spot that probably right amongst your like yeah. students, like they're arrogant to Natalia, or they oh. just get carried away. Yeah. yeah, but they got an attitude check right there, yeah. and then, like right there and then. See, for me, it's very simple. Like, yes, uh, this is combat sports, and you're fighting, right? But I'll get the mic. Sorry. Tito. We're good? Yeah. Mm. So, it's very important to remember, yes, you're a fighter, and this is combat sports, right? But more importantly, you are a martial artist. And a martial artist lives their life by a certain code. And if you don't have that code, then don't call yourself a martial artist. Simple as that. And in that code comes respect, comes uh, given to loyalty, Right, comes discipline. A lot of things come into that. So for me, it's always been about that. Like I love the martial arts aspect. My dad was a martial artist, you know. So your mom went to the gym. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. So, so all family of fighters. Uh, the mother, like Sani Dikini, there's this insane. It, it kind of pulled me in in a way. Like even though I didn't do, I used to play basketball because I thought all the girls wanted to see basketball. <laughs> <and swag. laughs> right. So I was in school and I was like, oh, the girls come for the basketball matches, but nobody comes to watch someone break a tile in, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. in karate. So I was like, forget it. I'm going to the basketball team. <laughs> and then I was so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work out. No. <laughs> because uh, I, I'm short, man. Like, I got no oh, business being yeah. on a basketball court. <laughs> so Tilly was like, hey, he was kind of, yeah, but. Yeah, uh, deep inside, that was the, that was all. I was I couldn't stop binge watching like Bruce Lee movies and Jackie Chan movies and you yeah. know like name it, man. I've seen them all. My dad used to watch it all, so I used to watch the Van Damme movies. I grew up with like, you know, bro. I don't know if this is a martial art movie that you consider, but Rush Hour, man. I love Rush Hour. I hope you not because it's man. like. It's like got that martial art ki- like yeah. spice to it, but it's got yeah. that comedy yeah, of like. For sure. It's it's too good. Man. Yeah, I look good. I look good. Got it there. So yeah, 
you know you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really good movie. But yeah, so I've always been drawn towards that. Okay, Sani dekhne, and then uh, like sports or combat. Like sports in general, but combat sports even a bit more. Oh, yeah. Especially because it scare me. Like it used to really scare me. I boxed uh, when I was in. I think when I was in seventh grade, like, I boxed when I was in school okay, in India. Uh, I got the guy like three five with the kids, or no, it was no, like no, a broad no. boxing. They had a boxing program. Oh yeah, and then so I. Used to My colleague did that, no, no, sorry. sorry. So I used to get into sun on the hill. There is a lot of people in school, ma. Thank you, Dad. Deep guy, didn't you? One, two, three. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's like a school man. Like, if you don't have it, don't take it. And then the teachers kind of knew also. It's not. It was really not that old. So the teachers knew. And then, like, there was an annual sports day coming up where, like, everybody had to represent. And then uh, they asked me, hey, you want to box? And then I... <laughs> And I was like, sure, who? <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, that kid. And then I didn't really like that kid very much in the same class. Me, I was like, hell yeah. I'll yeah, let's go. <laughs> and my perception of what it was going to be like and what it actually was like was so different. Okay? What was your perception? So I thought, I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to be Bruce Lee. Right? Yeah, <laughs> like, like put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to destroy this guy. Like I'm gonna It's going to be like slow move, yeah. movie action. <laughs> There's going to be smoke everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's literally what I thought. So they trained us for like a couple of weeks before they put us in the ring. Yeah? And the first, few we- first week of training was like, the yeah, first few days of training was very like, focus on your footwork, keep your hands up, you know what I mean? Just yeah, the basics. Yeah, yeah. And then they got me into sparring one day. And then for me, it was like, If I keep swinging my hands, that means he doesn't have the time to hit me, right? So I'm going to oh. keep swinging my hands. So I kept swinging my hands for like 20 seconds. And then Eventually you get tired, right? <laughs> then your hands drop and bam. Yeah, and then the other guy just like hit me with a jab so hard. And I was like, wait. A jab? Yeah. I was like, wait, that's, that wasn't in the script. Yeah. <laughs> like, this wasn't supposed to happen. And then when I got into the, by the time I actually got into the ring to fight, I was so scared of what, what had happened in sparring that like, I didn't really want to engage with the guy. You know, so I won the fight, yeah, but like you were too cautious. I was too scared. It's too scared, bro. And I didn't do like boxing for the next five, six years after that. I didn't do any sort of combat sports. But it was only when like my life started going in a downward spiral, like due to no fault, like due to nobody else's fault but mine, that I decided, okay, what's the one thing that scares me the most? But my hero was like fighting, combat sports. And I was yeah. like, That's what I'm going to do. You need a, like a wake-up call. Yeah, big something. jolt like my yeah. life. Do you think that's a mistake that a lot of coaches make? It's putting like kids in the ring a bit too soon yeah. or just like... Because clearly, not, or not even putting in the ring, but you sparring too soon just after mm-hmm. learning how to put your feet together, mm-hmm. right? Right. Mm-hmm. Like that. That's one of the reasons why the fight didn't work out the way yeah. you wanted it to, yeah. even though you won, right? Yeah, yeah. And... Yeah, I think sometimes confidence is also pretty key, right? Wow. When you go into the ring, like, you can almost tell, okay, a kind of guy, like, wow. in the ring, bunny, they fight that. Like, hey, you can tell that one guy is, like, mentally dominating. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Like, the way he yeah. looks into his opponent's yeah. eyes, like, you can tell he wants it more, yeah. you know? It's Does that fighter usually always come out on top? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. That yeah. guy has that feeling because that guy or girl probably put in the work to feel that way. You can't put the on them. on them. If you put in the work, you get confident. Man. If you haven't put in the work, like, you can lie to the whole world, you can't lie to yourself. <laughs> And on fight day, once you get inside the ring, like, all your lies will be exposed if you have been lying. So, generally, whoever puts in the work, they always have that confidence. You were talking about your downward spiral, and right? after this, <laughs> the boxing and the downward spiral thing. What what led to that? Because there's usually something that leads to that usually mm. an event or something. Nothing, bro. Like I was just a dumb kid, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll be honest. Enough. Like I come from a uh, very loving family. I'm saying, my 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 mom and dad have like made it wild sacrifices for me and my sister. Like we've always been showered with love. Like I had a good education, but I was just a dumb kid, man. Like I was always attracted to the wrong things and like. 
to an excess of it. So basically, to sum it all up, up until I started fighting, I had zero discipline. Zero discipline. And uh, I used, my prior priorities were all messed up. I craved uh, all the wrong things. Things that now repulse me, like attention. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I craved it like, like it was going out of style, man. Like I had to have attention. <laughs> well, I was a kid, but at the same time, like that's no excuse because there's so many kids. Yeah. yeah, and uh, all would, kids like to some degree, all kids do want to tell me, but it it gets out of hand when that's yeah. what you prioritize. Like absolutely. Until Paul Nikolai, what lens would I go to? And then till Lent, my zanzadade. Like suddenly one day, I found myself like in too deep in something that I didn't want to be too deep in. You know what I mean? Like the lifestyle I was. Sometimes living. you just sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Other just cutting my malabar nihon. So I haven't been that deep. In that yeah. that, Sometimes you just wake up and you're like, where, yeah. where did I get lost? Like, yeah. Sometimes my life is yeah, like, sometimes like, you're such a good kid, but I feel like yeah, it's yeah. in the end. Then sometimes you do the most stupid shit yeah. ever, and then you're just not thinking. Yeah. Then you just get this wake up call. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, where did, no. where did I get off path? Yeah. And you like, you hit it. You said it perfectly because the thing is, yes, sometimes you have that. That means sometimes in Matuki more than once. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. I kept like having that moment of that epiphany when you know where I'm like, okay, I need to change when they're gorti and then a few days like I, I change, I do thing, things better and then again I go back to the same thing again. So is the mic still acting yeah, up? Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. So then I was like you know, until when am I going to keep doing this, like, up and down, up and down nonsense? Like, I need something that's going to keep me in it for good. You can't keep lying to yourself. Yeah. So, Tilly Gorda Kizan, Muay Thai and combat sports, martial arts, it's so real, Nita. There's no lying, right? If I don't turn up for training for a whole week, the next week when I do turn up for training, people will I'm going to get whooped. Yeah. Simple as that. right? Because Simply because those guys have seven more days of training than I did. And that, that keeps you honest. Okay? So because of that, every time I would like kind of, even once I got into combat sports, every time I kind of started slacking, I knew I'd have to go back to the gym. And when I went back to the gym, it would show. And then it became it became a thing like, do I really want to just again and again keep starting and keep getting my butt kicked? So that means like, I've got to stay disciplined throughout my life. And I was like, okay, this is, if this is going to change my life for the better, then let's go. <laughs> let's do let's it. Go, let's <laughs> yeah. do it. Let's go deep into this. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because at least I know that if I keep going, if I keep going in the martial arts direction and the training direction, I live through the winter. <laughs> but yeah. if I live the life that I've been living so far, I don't know if I'll survive the winter. <laughs> you know? yeah. So the first time you went to the gym with your mom, you know, I want to circle back to this, right? <laughs> Do you, uh, when you first went in, did you have this feeling like, like this is my life, like this is my calling, or did it take a while? So when I went with my mom, I didn't go for a martial arts class. But I went yeah. to like lift weights. Right. Oh yeah. So I was kind of like, yo, why is everyone so big? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the only thing I was thinking. Like, These guys are big. I was, I was just a kid, right? Yeah. I was about 15. Everybody looks so big and scary yeah. and intimidating. That's the only thought, bro. I was like, man, these guys are big. So when did you realize that, you know what, this is, this is my life? Like, first, there's nothing else I can do. Oh, first Muay Thai class. Yeah. First Muay Thai class, 100%. You remember that day? Oh, like it was yesterday. <laughs> like crystal clear. I remember seeing it, it was hard to find the gym because it was like going out. And it was hard to find the gym. But I remember seeing like uh, I, I was on the phone with, with my coach, Edgar. And I had to Google Maps. I had to be like, from here, go here. and then Right, like left, right, left. <laughs> and like I remember... When I finally saw him, it was like it's the, at the end of a lane. There was this uh, house, this basement, my gym, okay? mm. and I saw this big white dude with like tattoos all over. You never met this guy? No, no, no. Just on the phone. Yeah, yeah. He's really big. He's not got a shirt on. He's <laughs> wearing like these shorts that are clearly too small for him, right? Certified <laughs> alpha male. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because Muay Thai shorts at that point, they had the Muay Thai shorts customs. And now now I know, okay, Muay Thai shorts are like borderline hot pants. Right? Uh, <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's a big man wearing like really small shorts. 
<laughs> that's what I thought the yeah. first time. And, and then he has like this Rottweiler next to him. So it's like a proper yeah. movie scene again. I remember meeting him, going down to the basement, like this small, smelly little basement that was stuffy. And they, it was like the baffle body, okay? Because there's a lot of people sweating in there. I went down there and I was like, whoa, there's a world like this? Like it exists? Remember, we're talking like, it's 16, a, uh, yeah. 16, 17 years ago. I live for combat sports and everybody's yeah. like, oh, come on. This is before it was cool. It's like your door opening to Narnia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. It just went into this portal where yeah. different universe exists. And yeah. I'm like, well, what is this? And then we did the first class and I had to throw up like before the class was over. But by the time the class was over, I was like, there's not a person on earth who can convince me that I'm going to do anything else in my life. This is it. Isn't that weird? Like, if you were to say that story and people didn't know you were a Muay fighter, like, people would be like, oh, what do you do for your life? You know, like, oh, so do you work at 9 to 5? Like, like, yeah. like, because if you're vomiting at the end of the class, if yeah. the gym is smelly, mm. you're intimidated <laughs> by the coach, right? Those are all negative sides, yeah, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's it's weird how life works. Matliba, isn't it? Like, I think that's why I liked it so much because I was so used to just like doing whatever the hell I wanted that out there I was like, I was put in check. My ego was put in check. You know what I mean? I was like, you're not shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I realized like I'm nothing. And then when you realize you're nothing, then you want to be something. That's right. It. But if you're already sitting there thinking, I've done it all. I'm well, I've achieved it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not there's no room for growth. The day I realized I was nothing is the day I knew I wanted to be something. Yeah. So that's just how it worked out. Exactly. When when life hits you in the face and you you're just down there and you have no yeah you realize that yeah you weren't standing on shit you know yeah. you're just floating in the air right like all the right like it's all like you're just lying to the world yeah. around you you're lying to yourself right hundred yeah, percent. As soon as you you feel that knockdown, right? Like you want to get back up to where you were floating, but you want to get up there with like yeah. security and be like, I have stuff yeah. to yeah. back me up. But, like I deserve yeah. where where I am now. And yeah. you totally do, man. With like Jim Khanna and Thank everything, you, and the places you've taken your fighters, that like, you you have all the pedestals to stand on top, bro. Mm, thanks, brother. Like, well, we have a lot of work to do, though. Yeah. We're nowhere close to being done. Like, we're just getting started. And there's so much to do. Like I said, Prapti Parika have been training for three years. They've been doing Muay Thai for three years. That's it. And in three years, we've got one if my silver medal, one if my bronze medal. We've got a double MF gold medal, right? We've got four Pithing Games uh, gold medals. Uh, between the two of them, we've got, like, three national titles. We've got... <laughs> it's insane, man. It's insane. But... That's, and we don't want to be like a big, uh, like a frog in a well, you know what I mean? Yeah. The world is big, man. And for us, we're not going to sit here going, oh, I'm you got it too good. It's like, we're, awesome. we're, we're big in Nepal, but like, the world might. Like, yeah. like, we're not, yeah. we're beginners. We're absolute amateurs, you know? And uh, we have a long way to go, a lot of work to do. But I'm just lucky that these girls and Karan, like, they never shy away from the work. And they're they're all in. And all in so if I'm anything in terms of as a coach today it's because of my athletes I'm nothing without them like I'm just it's like a book that never got read <laughs> like, <laughs> you never know if a good how, yeah. how would you know it's a good book unless you read it exactly so. bro it's it's crazy where you've got in and with Jim Khan and all like that that gym's like it's good quality you know it's good stuff Thanks, but like Right now, these days with Jim, it's almost like a trend, you know, Jim Colum, yeah, Jim Colum, yeah, yeah. there. And at the start, Jim Khanna was one of the only gyms that opened yeah. to be a gym in that warehouse, right? Yeah, yeah. These days, there's gyms everywhere, yeah. right? Gyms are popping up here, there, especially after COVID, right? Yeah. Um, How did Jim Khanna continue to stand out? Because it does. People yeah. still talk about it, right? People say, hey, Jim Khanna, yeah. hey, like, the fight is there, you know, like, yeah. but how, what do you think you do to make Jim Khan stand out and on top of that industry? Um, I don't really care like what other people are doing so much. I really don't. Like, I don't even look at it. After I opened Jim Khan, I haven't been to a single gym in the country. Not even one. 
And it's not because I'm a hater or anything like that. It's just that I want to keep evolving. And when I evolve, I don't want to have somebody else's ideas in my head. Whether it's like consciously or subconsciously, I don't want those ideas in my head. Okay? You want it all to be... It's got to be authentic. And I think that's one of the main reasons why we stood up. One, we were the first. Okay. And it, so that always makes a big difference. And since we were the first, I'm like, I'm copy it. Hey, but it's good. Yeah. Right? Nobody's be like, Oh, usko just to banana sa, or you just to banana sa banana. Oh, then it's like we, we first. did it. Yeah. yeah. So we don't really have to you with that. And wherever we've gone after that, like every idea we've had, you know, for, we've always done it authentically. It's never been like a replica of what somebody else did before. So whether it was uh, bar vendors, you know, whether it was um, GFN, like without GFN. I think we'd still be five years back in terms of combat sports and professional combat sports in Nepal. And the reason GFN like just blew up the way it did, like some of the videos on YouTube back then had like 260k views. Like, <laughs> could we pull up some of those videos, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was a lot. I think I've seen a few right now. Yeah. But if you look up like... Very fine nights. Yeah. If you look up Ashish ko fight, Ashish Tanong ko knockout, if you look up Daku's fight, right? Yeah. Uh, if you look up... Uh, Raju go fight. They've all got like insane views, man. And we didn't expect it. We really didn't. I'm the YouTube Kholio. Within like um, a week, we had 14,000 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yo, I don't know how this YouTube thing yeah. works, right? Like, I'm the fight. Yeah, yeah. The... No, those are the new ones, the old ones. Okay? Your prospects are constant. If you go to the oldest, then you'll see uh, the popular ones too. Yeah. Yeah. So you go down, look at that, 215k oh, views, <laughs> 66k views. It, it just went nuts, bro. And then Raju and Daku go have like these two fights. We got 188k, 280. I'm like, what is going on here? Where the phone you been my head on your video? Like, some of the thumbnails I have definition before. Bro, you know what I had expected? What? Like, I would have been happy with 1,000 views. Yeah, hey, yeah. I was like, if it hits the K mark, I'm happy. I made it. You know, <laughs> if you can't see the whole number, then you made it. Yeah. You know, that's because I know nothing about the YouTube world. Bro. I know nothing about like you. I'm not a YouTuber. You know, I don't, I don't know how it works. And then the first video, I literally went boom, 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 boom. I was like, wait, now what do we do? Like, I think it's all about authenticity. You know, like even yeah. I don't know much, and I'm just starting this. And mm. but I think if if it looks copied or if it looks mm. like hey, I, I've seen this before, then people aren't gonna. Yeah, it. yeah. Yeah, and we've never like I, I always tell people this. Uh, some people get it the wrong way because they're like, "Oh, Jim Gana, you know, Ralda is like hard to work with and stuff." Like that. It's not that, man. It's not that I'm hard to work with. Or anything mm-hmm. like. It's just that. Well, it's pretty obvious that I don't follow. Right, I'll never follow anybody. But that You're does. A leader. No, bro. This is where people get it wrong. I don't want to be a leader either. I have no interest in leading or. Fun. I'm doing my own thing. I'm on my own path. I got my own journey. You know what I mean? Like, people can do what they want. I don't care. Like, I, I have no time in my day or in my life to sit and, like, think about other people and hate on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, if you come up to me with something that I feel like is going to help me get to where I, I want to go in my journey, then yes, we'll work together. If it doesn't, then we won't. It's not thing personal, but people don't understand that. When you say, okay, I don't think this is going to work out. No, I don't know why. But I don't know. People kind of take it negatively. Yeah. No, I think, especially in Nepal, I, I think I find it really frustrating as well when people just really have a hard time saying no. Mm-hmm. Right? And I think that I appreciate it more when people do say no. Because they're not going to lead me on, you know? Yeah. There are podcast guests that I approach, right? Mm. Sometimes in person, one, in person, I'm going to get out of But like, um, text her, I'm going to get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some of you choose not to respond, and that's fine. I totally understand, mm. right? But some people respond saying, yeah, sure, let's do something. And then See, they go, yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, if you don't want to do yeah. it, you don't respond, or just say no. Like, that's yeah. perfectly fine, oh. you know? I understand, and... I understand that you're busy, but mm-hmm. don't like, don't lead me on with this false sense of hope mm-hmm. and then just be like, oh, it's what the, no, that's yeah. almost kind of worse. Yeah, you know? I know. They were like, I mean, I don't know, man. I generally 
uh, am very selective about the people I work with. Doesn't mean that the people I don't work with are not good people or they're bad people. I don't know why people are thinking that way, but I mean, like I said, man, I, I'm on my own path. I'm on my own journey. I'm doing. I have my own goals, my own ambitions, and I don't need to go around telling everybody what they are. Right? I'm. I come from like, I come from an era where I was born before social media. <laughs> You know what I mean? So the only validation I needed, like, in that era was from myself and from my loved ones. Yeah. I didn't really need that valid, like, so I still don't need that validation from the rest of the world where I have to go out and say, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm going to do. Look, I did it. Now applaud. You know what I mean? I, I don't really give a shit if you watch, yeah. don't watch, like, don't like, hate. It makes no difference to me, like. I'm this is my it. thing. Just do, I'm doing it for yeah. me. And this I'm doing is it forever, it's, man. It's the same thing with this podcast, you know. Like, I think season that I go podcast, man. There was like a lot of hate that came my way, you know. Mm. Uh, not a lot, but like people just didn't know about me, you know. And I'm some kid thinking, like mm. season that I go interview mm-hmm. people, like, what's happening, right? Mm. And there were some people that stood up for me in the comments, which I do appreciate. Yeah. But I think that's when I realized it's like I really just don't care, yeah. and. Like there are some people that um that are really close to me, like my parents, and they'll say, "Hey, try this on your podcast. Try this on your podcast." Mm. Those people I listen to because those yeah. people they've been there from day one yeah. and they know what they're talking about, and I trust them, right? Yeah. But some guy on the internet is not going to ruin my yeah. day, exactly. right? Like I'm going to do what you, you want if you're jealous or if you want to hate, just you do your thing if mm. that's what you want to do. Like yeah. some guys stop me. Yeah, like the people that I seek approval from, like, my parents, mm. my sister, my family, mm. some of my really close friends, right? If the, they are all proud of what I'm doing, mm-hmm. I don't need to get lost in those comments, you know? Mm. I don't need to start advocating for myself yeah, and start yeah. whinging about it, right? Oh. Like, people around me love what I'm... Like, they approve of what I'm doing, yeah. but they also give me criticism, right? Yeah, and yeah. I'm fine with that because I That's know they know grow. what they're talking about, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I understand. And it's amazing that, like, at this age, you have that. Because at your age, I would have been angry at the world. <laughs> I mean, like, I would have been like, what? Give no, they, yeah, they, they were moments, though. Yeah. Like, they're angry at the world. Like, they're the mala bani bata. And I'm not saying that, like, I'm some guruji that figured it all out, yeah, right? Like, yeah. that's going to happen again. But you're on the right path, though, bro. Like, it's amazing. I was actually really looking forward to this one. Okay? <laughs> I, of all, like, yeah, I was really looking forward to this one. Because... I really believe in like what you're doing and I, I find it like amazing that you've you know you you're doing this the way you are and to see you like get to where you've gotten to already yeah. at your age and like the world's yeah. yours man no like it, it really has and what I really appreciate with my parents is they, yes they're well off yes we're we're a family with like we have that right mm-hmm. but it was never spoon fed to me Mm. Studio, I favorite on one day. I had mm. to use my own connections, mm. gym butter. I had to, like, you were something good that I could deal with. Any, like, I, this was never the goal. Like, mm. I never thought this would happen. I mm. thought eventually I would move out and build some small, cheap studio mm. with some money I had saved yeah. up, right? Like, all of this, I'm not a hard worker either. Mm-hmm. I, I do my thing, and mm-hmm. I think I got lucky. I was in the right place at the right time. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it was ever spoon fed to me. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Like, Which it wasn't I my pa- <laughs> You can talk to my mom about it, yeah. right? But, like, I was just some kid with a delusion, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, like, everybody's doing podcasts. I'm only got them. And then I was like, mom, can I buy a mic? No. Mm. Can I use that room? No. Why do you need that room? Like, yeah. just record an episode for it. Why do you want to invest yeah, yeah. money, Kalu, right? And then after 10 episodes, I told my mom, um, okay, look, I've got 1K unique viewers. Uh huh. I've got 100 subscribers. Mm-hmm. Let's do it now. I've released three episodes. Mm-hmm. I'm serious. She's like, no. <laughs> so then we made a deal. We made some deal like 100 subscribers yeah. and uh, 1K unique viewers and she would invest, right? Yeah, yeah. Happened? Nothing. <laughs> Radio <laughs> silence. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and I think that's what I really appreciate with my parents. It's not like, it's not like some game that I'm playing in my own tiny little world, you mm-hmm. know, like, this is the real world, you know? And sometimes it's hard to believe that. And No, bro, like, that's why, see, when you're authentic and when you're, like, you're real, it'll always stand out, okay? Yeah. Always. You know what I mean? You said, like, you never thought that 
you'd be here with Sanjay Ko Vima, you know, yeah. working with Sanjay Bandera. Mm-hmm. What? Why, why are you here? It's because of the work you put in, right? Yeah. It's because you stood out, because you were authentic, you were real, you were genuine, you were yourself. And that's why it stood out. And that's why people were attracted to what you were doing. That's why I was kind of like, should I got to do this podcast? <laughs> but I'm not really big on it. Yeah. yeah. Because this means that there's a couple of hours of my face on the internet, again, yeah. with me saying something stupid, probably. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people will have an opinion on my opinion. And like, it's really not like the kind of energy I, I like want. in my life. But when you were like, Rob, like, can we do this? I was like, hell yeah, bro. <laughs> I, I really want to do it. And yeah. I wouldn't feel that level of excitement, to be, to be honest, with anybody who's not authentic. Yeah. You know, and that's why it's not everything authentic. Authenticity is getting lost these days. And I think that's another reason why a podcast for me was such a good calling because my parents would be like, why, why are you looking at the internet? Why are uh, you to my care? They like uh, Instagram, my like school, where they, all of it is uh, fake. All of it is uh, BS. Like people are fabricating their lives uh, to not be authentic, but uh, to look like they have some perfect uh, life, right? When they don't, like yeah. nobody's got perfect life. Nobody. Well, everybody's got their own little little thing, yeah, yeah. right? And that's when I was like, you know what? Instead of just scrolling, doom scrolling, which mm. sometimes I'm still guilty of, mm-hmm. right? But why don't I do something as well? Why don't I create an authentic platform that yeah. people can come on and just say their piece, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's worked out so well, man. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't need to like, you know, that's why you don't need clickbaits. Yeah. Y- you can just do you... And like, people watch, they watch, they don't watch, they don't watch. Exactly. Really like. Yeah. And that's the whole thing. When, when you know that you're not authentic, when you know, like like I said, you can lie to the world, you can't lie to yourself, right? No. That's when you got to make a lot of noise. That's when you got to talk a lot and like put in clickbaits and <laughs> thirst traps. Because you know that deep inside, it's just a replica of what somebody else wanted first. Yeah. So I think that's that 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 goes in everything in life, not just fighting or podcasting or everything. Yeah, life. you just gotta be authentic, you know. Yep, for sure. Going back, going back to Jim Khan now, right? I think I don't know if you're okay with unveiling this. I know we can cut mm-hmm. this. And that you're planning to open a new gym, I know. Like the, so I go um the story about teacher by era so like land or go somewhere, right? Yeah. Like, how's that going? Yeah, we can put it up, man. No problem. It's open knowledge now. Yeah. Everybody knows that we're building a new gym. Gym uh, is basically, it was always a prototype. It was never the final product. In my head, it was never the final product because there was so many things that I could have done better, I could have put in. I'm not expecting it. I'm not expecting it. I didn't expect it to be Jim Khanna. <laughs> if that makes sense, right? I thought like, yeah, I want, I, I really want a place where I can train, where I can like do Muay Thai in Nepal. I can teach Muay Thai in Nepal. And I know that I can't keep the lights on by just doing one class in the morning, one class in the evening. So I used to share my space in Delhi when I had my gym with a CrossFit gym, right? And so I was like, whoa, this is awesome, man. So I can have, it's a CrossFit. So, and, but that one was like a miniature version of what we have right now, like a really small version. But we shared space. And I was like, yeah, we could do that too. And then we need to have membership j- throughout the day. So let's just uh, keep weights as well. Man, you know? The idea. Like, and so even the weights and uh, everything else that we bought there, it was like at that point, I wanted everything to be only functional. Right? So what I mean is nothing for aesthetics, only be, uh, based on like functional movements, okay. right? Whatever you can use in your day to day life, and that was me being a child at that point in a way because I didn't know the game as well. I didn't know the business as well. Now I've been in this industry like I've been. We've been running gym kind of for seven years, and like for seven years, I've just had a tick of okay. I need to do this better, this better, this better, this better. It's been like a learning experience. Okay, it's time to finally take everything that I've learned. We've learned, not just me, me, my partners, my team, and the brand we've built to, I, I, I just think like it's the right time to to kind of do it right. Okay? Not for anybody else, but after like to, to do everything the right way. Yeah. So we're doing that and it's been a long journey so far, man. <laughs> was it always the plan to open a second gym? Like this was always the prototype? Yeah, 100%. 
And that's why I'm like, hey man, that gym looks just like yours. But then man, say, man, say, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just a prototype. <laughs> like it makes no difference to me. Yeah. So the new ones, like I'm really excited for the yeah. new gym. It's gonna be amazing. What was do you think the if you don't mind sharing that the biggest mistake you think you made in gym Khanna and what kind of change will that bring to the new one? Where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> Pull out the list. <laughs> um, so let's just talk about the facility, eh? In terms of facility, I honestly thought that our space was too big. Really? Yeah, okay. In the beginning. Because everybody told me it's too big, yeah. and this is when like this is what happens when you listen to everybody, right? Everybody's like, "Nepal ma, it's gym count." So, kino ta yu tur This is the time when like you're renting out small apartment and opening that gym there, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, ah, "That's enough space. <laughs> no, <laughs> let's stop there." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now, when you look like when you look at our Muay Thai classes, morning and evening, how is it? Everybody's bumping into each other. Uh. When we started Jimkana, it was like it was, it's Jimkana Muay Thai because I teach Muay Thai, nigga, and I do Muay Thai. I've never, I, I don't do MMA. I don't teach MMA, so I don't pretend to teach MMA. But now we've got a full fledged MMA program, right? With one of the best coaches in the world. So till you got that, Kiri. Now we want to focus more on our MMA section too, because we've got such a fantastic. Uh, guest coach and richard mm. that uh to have just that little space is is a crime <laughs> it's, we we can't run it that way so we want to have more space for mma we want to cater to i wasn't sure at that point like who would be interested in in muay thai when because i was new to nepal i hadn't been living here but now i understand okay we have to cater to like a lot of kids you know we need a lot of space we need to do so many things differently like in terms of just uh everything like if, for me it's all a mess now okay. you know, people come in they're like whoa really nice facility and I, it makes me happy don't get yeah. me wrong of course it makes me happy but in my head like there's like so many things that need to be fixed from uh, the facility point of view and administrative point of view from the coaching point of view from like our business model everything is different I feel like with humans in general they the mindset and I, we're always looking for that improvement or something yeah. that's wrong that we want to fix right no. otherwise we're just bored we get bored right yeah. like for example, um, with Jim Khanna and like, like I just thought like wow, like I, mm. to the point where like the bathroom is structured in such a way that you had to go through it to enter yeah, the yeah. gym, you know, like <laughs> that kind of stuff I've never seen, right? Yeah, I was like wow, this feels like the US, oh, yeah. Yeah. and and for me that was crazy, and I'm like whoa, right? But yeah. for you, that's like your everyday game, yeah, like yeah. that's like your house, you know, yeah, and yeah. you're like this could be better, that could be yeah. better. It's the same in. People come to my house, you know, they're like, wow, it's so nice, right? Mm-hmm. And even when I move, it's like, wow, our new house is so nice. But then mm-hmm. Adgal, it's like, oh, this is there, that yeah, is there, yeah. this is broken, that's yeah. broken, right? That's true. I think that's just a lot of good. It's a good analysis, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but no, I'm really excited for the new Jeep and Thanks, I think brother. If bigger and better, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I want with, without giving away too much. I just want to say, like, you know, when we opened the first gym, kind of there was like this, just a lot of noise about it. Nee, yeah? like, whoa, something like this in Nepal, man. Right? We're going to like quadruple that, man. It's yeah. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it because uh, it's something that I'm really. I have I can't remember the last time I was excited about something as much as I am about this. So it's gonna be awesome. What do you think, like, Jim Khan has survived so much, right? Like, did a lot. And I think, what do you think was, like, the hardest part about, like, like running Jim Khan, you know, and making it to where it is today? I'm sure there were moments where it was just, like, you're just like, what are we doing? Like, we, mm-hmm. can't, we can't do this anymore. <laughs> yeah. right? And I'm like, were there ever moments like that? And, like, how did you deal with that? Yeah, like, on my way here. <laughs> <laughs> the bike <laughs> motor. <laughs> No, I mean, of course you have that, man. No matter what you do, you have that. Nee? And the world's been through so much with the pandemic and everything. Everybody's got their doubts and stuff. But at the end of the day, you got to know who you are and you have to believe in who you are, man. Like, And not just me. I'm super fortunate, really fortunate, because the the investors at Gymkhana, you know, the partners that I have, the, the relationships that I have, it, they're fantastic. And 
like our clients go the the loyalty that we've earned from them you know the faith they put in us the trust they have in us like we've earned that you know we may not have made a lot of money because i spent it all on the fights but um we did earn a lot of uh, relationships and that it paid off run, later it paid for off sure, later. for sure for sure like uh, when we opened gymkhana i remember some people told me you wouldn't the first week of gymkhana I remember some people I'm very close to told me, bro, you're not going to get 15 members at this price because at that time we were yeah. supposed to be a bit expensive. I was like, I just signed number 17. Because <laughs> at that point, I know. What you that. say? <laughs> <laughs> so I know, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. But due time, I'm a confidence to get. But when after COVID, after being shut down, locked down for two whole years, and when we finally opened, I didn't have that confidence anymore. Because like, I will, It's not a brand new gym anymore, right? There are so many others that are very similar. And after COVID at the time where everyone's yeah. opening the gym. And there are so many newer gyms now, right? Newer than mine. The facility is new. The equipment's new. Everything's new. And uh, whatever we would have reinvested, we've spent all on survival, mm-hmm. not on reinvesting. So it was like a very difficult time at that point. Okay? But the thing that really kept me going is like, Sachi Bandakiri, It sounds corny as hell, but my partners, for sure, like family and partners, for sure. But the clients, bro, like, they just came back. They're like, yo, we just have to be back. Uh, <laughs> and that was like, that was special. Okay? When you have people that you don't really know, like, not know too well, but when you don't have that kind of close relationship with them, and they're backing you up like that. Like, yeah. that's another t- kind of support, yeah. you know, yeah. like. And once again, like that price, the amount of equipment you have, it, it doesn't buy it. You know, yeah, you don't I buy know. their trust. You yeah. know, it's like the way you treat them, yeah. the way the staff is. It's yeah, mind you, this is like post-pandemic when people were scared, still scared to go out. Yeah. Right? They were still scared to go out in public, still scared to go to restaurants, to anywhere. And then like when we opened, they they had that trust in us. That, okay, Jim Kanama is going to be clean. It's yeah. going to be safe. Right? They're going to yeah, look after it. We we'd earned that ni, in yeah. these years, so of course we didn't go back to like where we were on day one. Yeah. But the the general trajectory was that okay we're on we're on the right path, so we just gotta ride this wave. But yeah, I'm sure it wasn't easy. I'm sure it was pretty discouraging as well. When you whenever you go to do anything for a long time and then you had to go back to like day one, yeah. it's not the best. Like yeah. you're like I have to come back here again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, but and yeah, during COVID itself, how did you kind of survive? Oh man, that's when everything fell apart. To be honest, man, like from the business to the team to everything, you know, and it wasn't easy. <laughs> it wasn't easy for sure. But to be honest, like I don't give a damn if it's easy. I don't give a damn if everybody leaves. I don't care what. Like, it's my it's my baby. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're not gonna put it up for adoption. Yeah, right? no way, bro. Like I, we had good offers. Yeah. We had really good offers, considering the time that was going on. Nobody was investing at that point. People were in the gym. Maybe people saw that okay, this is a good time. And there, we had good offers, man. It's like hell no, I'm not buying my baby, <laughs> and I'm not putting it down either, man. Like, is we're gonna yeah, come back? Yeah. And it wasn't easy, like convincing everybody because more passionate to the. Yeah. And it's put your mind to it. You're gonna do it. Yeah, but like even the people who believe in me, who are close to me, una let me convince one of the guys on them, but. <laughs> So it's never done my mind, bro. Like ever, ever. But it was hard though. Covid time, I, w- I won't lie. You see, it was probably the hardest time that we've been through. The financial aspect is whatever. Uh, when so business up down, uh, as a business owner, you have to like make peace with that. But everything else, there's a lot of things that I wasn't prepared for. Get that point? I w- there's a lot of things that I didn't see coming at all because I thought like, yo yeah, man, that the tick so. On that front, we're good. Everything's good, Bandakiri. But you know what they say, man. When a ship starts to sink, <laughs> the rats are the first ones to abandon ship. Yeah, right? so yeah. It's okay. At least now I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It almost filtered out the fake. You know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think COVID time was yeah. easy, man. And I think you brought up like an interesting point about how like. A key part of that you staying open and keeping faith in what you had was yes, the clients were there, but also family and partner, right? And mm. I mean, I guess your relationship with your family it seems like you really value it, you know, yeah. and you really do have that trust, right? Yeah, bro. Like 
my family is everything, man. Like, uh, for me, I'm, I'm, I may not seem like it, but like, uh, I, I'm, I don't have a lot of relationships. I don't like to build a lot of relationships, but the ones that I do have, like, they mean more to me than I ever will to myself. Yeah. Yeah. It's just been that way. And it's because I've seen these people make sacrifices for me, whether it's uh, my immediate family, whether it's the people I train, the people in my team, uh, the people that I work with. I've seen them make sacrifices for me. So uh, loyalty is like where, where the time I come from, <laughs> loyalty is everything, bro. Yeah. It's everything. If you don't have loyalty, like you're nothing. So yeah. for me, that's really important. And in the fact that you're really picky about, not picky, picky is a bad <laughs> word, a bit like... Selective. But selective yeah. about who you decide to build relations with. It makes those relations that much more valuable for both yeah. parties. Yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. A lot of times people get mad at me saying like, I don't stay in touch. I'm not good at staying in touch. I'm like, yeah, that's actually yeah, something yeah. they're right about it. I'm not very good yeah. at staying in touch. But it's also because like, uh, I'm so dialed in that I feel like, you're so focused yeah. on your own day. Yeah. So yeah. the people that really know me and really have like a, a real relationship with me, like even my friends, right? My friends from, from 15, 16 years ago, yeah. I don't really get to see them as much as I want to or hang out with them as much as I want to. But my real friends, they're my real friends. So they know why I'm not They around. know why. It's not like, hey, most of you say, they yeah. know that you're just that. Yeah. So my intimate circle, like, we're good with yeah. but if anybody feels like i'm avoiding them then like you probably don't know me that well anyway so i'm probably <laughs> am avoiding you, <laughs> you <know? laughs> like, if i knew you better i wouldn't like, we wouldn't have this conversation <laughs> you, know, you need to protect your energy bro like i feel like that you know with everything that i've been through and it's not like i've been to have a traumatized, traumatizing life but i've lived long enough to to understand certain things and i understand that you have to protect your energy man and what you give out, what you bring in as well, you know. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't wish bad upon anybody. Like just because I'm not, hey, what's up? And, you know, I, I doesn't mean I wish bad upon them. I, I just don't care. Like I'm doing my own thing. You know. Just that. Mm-hmm. Just dialed in. You know, yeah, that, yeah, that's just roll that, roll that, <laughs> that dialed in guy. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, in thank. Yeah, thank. Do you have anything else to add? That you, bro, else? tell me about you. What's going on? Bro, well, nothing life? much, man. I'm actually... Uh, so right now... Exams are kidding. Exams are kidding. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to And then so you chill. Okay. So what plans after? Plans after, I think I'm going to go to the US. Man. I'm actually leaving the country, man. I'm, what? I'm going to Norway to study um, for two years. What are you studying? Um, IB program, like, last two years of high school. So you're gonna switch from like A levels to IB now? Yeah. In the last two years. Like so I G C C got it. Oh. I mean now I transition into the IB. It's wild. Yeah. Oh, good luck when yeah. you're going. I didn't know. I'm this. going in August. Yeah. So July my I'll be on summer holiday. Oh. Family time, quality time and oh. then ship me off to boarding school. <laughs> <laughs> no girlfriend? What's no, the situation no, like that? Nothing like that. that like, nothing like that. I'm also no dialed in, you know. Uh-huh. Gotta do my stuff. <laughs> Uh, no, but right now, I, I, you can ask the guys here, but I've been recording a lot of podcasts. Wow. So people might be really confused, like, October, my other podcast wow. online. <laughs> and the reason is like that I, not, I don't fly all the way back to record one wow. and leave. But like, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm pre-recording a bunch in June. Uh, okay. And hopefully, it'll last me till December. So you come back in December? Yeah, like winter nice. break and stuff. And how's the lifting and stuff going, bro? Bro, I'm, I'm going to be honest, man. Like... Exam they got that it just your whole life just pauses you yeah, know yeah yeah I understand and we talked about going back to day one and starting all of that yeah finding it really hard bro like yeah very Smith machine or squat and very forty kilo deadlift yeah. and when you know that this is not what yeah yeah your potential is you know yeah. so I it's yeah, hard to say motivated but bro yesterday I went with my friend we had a we had a killer workout man so yeah. it's nice. crazy. I saw it with Prapti too, like she came back after the exams and when Prapti like this guy's eleventh with the retired fighter, retired fighter one yeah. day. And she came back after the exams and she'd taken like a two, three week break. Yeah. For Prapti Parika to take a two, three week break is like unheard it's, of. It's like, unheard, yeah. They never take breaks. But 
I do. And then I was like, how does it feel the, next, the first day when like, it's just like everything's so hard? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I can't move my body. It just feels so real. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. But I think that's what makes it so addicting is yeah. you know what it's like to stop. And yeah. like you said, even seven days or a week off, it, people will dismiss and be yeah. like, yeah, you that will you feel the difference. Yeah, of course, bro. And be, once you feel that difference, you never want to stop again. Yeah, no way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an addiction, man. Yeah. Like Plus that soreness. Yeah, yeah you, you just... Ne- yeah, like, you why not... Like, sorry, yeah, goodbye. Go, go, go I was like saying that, like, when I first started working out, my parents would always complain about soreness. Yeah. <laughs> I never got sore because... And they would... They would slowly do it, you yeah. know. They knew I was starting out. Uh-huh. They knew I'd never done this. So they slowly did it in such a way that I was never sore, yeah. right? To the point where I'm lifting 80 kilos, the next day, I'm not that sore, right? Yeah, yeah. And my parents don't understand it. I don't understand it either. I'm like, I don't understand what soreness is. <laughs> I'm immune. But yeah, yeah. Took a break, I think, went on winter break. Uh-huh. Came back. Next day, I like, literally, my legs wobbled. I'm like, <laughs> what is happening, you know? And... That's when I learned what soreness was, and I was like... I kid you not, man. Like, uh, so I haven't... The last time I sparred was, I think, two years ago in Phuket when we were there for uh, training, you know? And I hadn't sparred, and with everything going on, with the new gym coming up, and, like, all the work that's been happening, like, I've just had time to... I've barely had time at all. So, I see right before my birthday, it was, like, in May, right before my birthday, it was, like, a day before my birthday, and it happened to be a Wednesday, right? Yeah. Wednesday sparring days at Jim Khanna. And two days ago, I'm the MMA team ko uh zana kid are fight cancel boy. Yeah? Oh. And they were also kinda low. So they were like, as MMA not gonna we're all gonna go into Muita and we'll just spar when you yeah. I had no clue that these boys were down there as well, right? Yeah. So I think it's just I'm thinking it's just the clients who sparring man, you know? Yeah. Like, Alright, it's my birthday tomorrow before I'm like uh before I turn into like a younger dinosaur, <laughs> you know. I'm just gonna start working out. I, I'm gonna go have one last sparring session, man. You know? I went down, right? I went down promotion guards. <laughs> thing I got, I'm like, I see Hans Raj. I see like uh, these are your guys. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. All like, the yeah. killers. I'm like, what are you guys doing? And like, yeah. coach, our fight got canceled, so we didn't want to do class. We just want to spar today. When they're light sparring, like, oh, yeah. I was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I welcome my next birthday with a fever. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday! Bill got those spider sparring yeah, yeah, yeah. with all these young guys. Bully <laughs> man, my whole body sore, and I'm like, I have a fever, I and know, that. So he's just like, maybe you're a bit too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can spar again or not yeah. anymore? Of course I am. Yeah, I'm yeah, stupid yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like I'm never gonna fight again, but uh, I'll always get in there. I'll always get in there and do some light sparring, as long as it's not with certain guys. Like, Hans Raj is one of the guys. I'm, I'm scared to spar with that guy, man. He's, he's so strong and he's so good. Uh, Karan scares me to a certain degree, sparring with Karan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's some guys that I won't get, get in with. But yeah, just to keep myself fit and like, let's see that I still know how to take a punch, yeah. you know? I don't know right. if I can still land. You still got to prove your dominance. No, you just, <laughs> I'm the guy there. No, no, no. I have not been the guy for a long time, bro. And like, Part of growing up is realizing that and letting that go too. You know? I've not been that guy for a long time, but I'll always be the guy to make the guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll always, guy or girl. You're the guy for the guy, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what it's all about, man, for me right now. Another question, I know we're about to wrap up this, but there's one thing I want to ask you. MMA sure. is a big growing thing right now, right? And okay. you, MMA is like, I think one of the the second biggest sports now in the world, right? Yeah, fastest growing. The fastest growing yeah. as well, right? Uh, is Jim Khanna slowly transitioning to MMA, or do you think Muay Thai is also getting up there? Bro, we've had MMA since before lockdown. Oh, we've yeah. been doing an MMA. We've had like on and off MMA programs since twenty eighteen, was it or nineteen when we brought in Sadiq from Delhi? Yeah, so. Okay, if we're really going to get into this, let me explain it. Hey, you know why we didn't have MMA when we first started? Because mm. I don't teach MMA. I don't know MMA. Oh, yeah. And there was nobody who could teach MMA. Oh, yeah. There's still not, I don't know, it's kind of tricky to say, but China again, I don't know. Let's just be honest, man. Cool, right? There was nobody then. So then I came from Delhi where Cross Train Fight Club is like a Cross Train Fight Club. Anybody look it up, it's the best MMA gym in India. 
is the gym that produced Anshul, who's now in the UFC, right? Cross train, we started together back in the day. Sid and I have this amazing relationship. And so I was like, bro, we really got to get into the MMA game. Like, and we, I need instructors. But and you recognize that it was rising back in 2018? Bro, I recognize it was rising like in, I think, 2008 when I started. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I knew what, what it was because that's when it was actually coming up. Like, the Chuck Liddell, the Shogun who was the uh, Vitor Belfort, and Leo Machida, Anderson Silva at his prime. You know what I mean? Like, BJ Penn and GSP. We're talking, like, the golden era almost, <laughs> right? So, I knew where it was going. But for me, I never wanted to do MMA, like, learn MMA myself simply because I love Muay Thai so much. I love the art of eight limbs. I like, for me, it's that's my sport, you know? I love it. Uh, with everything I have but I'd be stupid to not recognize that MMA is as big as it is and I love watching MMA right I've been watching MMA for longer than most people pe- most of the coaches out here have been coaches right? yeah. so but for me like I said being authentic is everything I'm not gonna fake it it was easy man you think I couldn't have faked it and said yo I'm um, not Multan, I'll teach you Muay Thai yeah. and MMA and yeah. like what seven years ago you think anyone would have fraud checked me no I would have gotten away with it easy, bro. And I would have scammed people and made a lot of money. But that's not me. That's not how I do things. And for me, it was always like, we will have MMA when we have a real MMA coach in Nepal. So I waited. I worked a deal out with Sid. Sadiq came to Nepal. Uh, we, we had MMA. Matter of fact, Anshul Jubilee, who's in the UFC right now, the first Indian to get to the UFC, two fights before his UFC Uyo, he had a UFC contract, wrote to UFC contract. He did, I think his last fight before his wrote to UFC contract, he did his camp at Gymkhana. Oh, okay, wow. But we don't have an MMA program, right? That's what hey, people think. Yeah, like, okay. You've got a guy who's in the UFC right now. Who, who did a camp at yours. Who did a camp at Gymkhana yeah. in, what, 2019? Yeah. Because at that point, Sadiq was here. Sadiq and uh, Anshul were training partners at Crosstrain and... I signed a deal with Sadiq to come and teach MMA here for like uh, three months. So that time, Anshul came down as well. Our striking program, like nobody doubts our striking, right? Yeah. <laughs> anybody, that is like, right? Uh, so, and at that point, we had uh, Coach Sujit from H2O uh, teaching boxing. In my opinion, one of the best technical uh, boxing coaches in the country. He, he's really good at his job. So we had him... We have our Muay Thai system, and then he was training with uh, Sadiq. So he did his whole camp with us for two and a half, three, what, two and a half months, three months. Anshul, like, before he left, he was so happy. He, like, I don't, I've never said this before, but Anshul actually gave me his first pro fight gloves as a gift before he left Nepal. Oh, wow. And uh, so we've had MMA for longer than people actually realize. Yes. But it's just that. I didn't promote it as such because I knew Sadiq had to go back, you know, and we didn't have a permanent coach. But once, like, Richard came in as a guest coach, then now we've actually got a full-time MMA program. He's, right? Now we can actually... He's permanent now as well, right? He's here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. So now we're actually focusing on MMA, but it's not like we'll ever go away from Muay Thai. Thai. Man. We'll always have that too. Is your fighter that... You- is there more money in MMA for fighters or is it similar? Yeah, there's, more, there's more money in uh, And do you want the fighter that you train specially? You're, I'm going to call them the golden trio, right? <laughs> Your golden trio. <laughs> Thanks. Do you want them to transition into MMA or do you want them to stick with Muay Thai? I want them to do whatever makes them happy, bro. <laughs> I, it's not my decision to make. I'll be there to support them. I'll be there to coach them, to guide them, mm. whatever they want to do. But it's on them. It's on them. And uh, if they want to do MMA, I've already made sure that we've got one of the best coaches in the world that they can train under. And if they want to do Muay Thai, then I'll keep trying my best every day to make them better. It was some them. <laughs> yeah. On that note, man, thank you so much for coming. That I really Thanks, do appreciate brother. your time. And Thank you for having yeah, me, bro. Yeah. And just want to say, like, super proud of you and what you're doing and, yeah. like, how far you've come. And don't ever let yeah. anybody dim your shine, yeah. brother. Thanks, Vinadu. A lot of people don't know that, but yeah, yeah Vinadu. Vinadu, yeah. need awesome. But yeah. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> but yeah. Good luck with everything, Manav. Hey, okay. Good luck in Norway and uh, stay in touch. And yeah, definitely. And I'll, I'll see you soon, hopefully. All right, see brother. you in the
All right, thanks. Vias Media Network.